Chapter 14 Francesco and Salvatore had managed to escape into the bushes, but Dominic and Antonio weren't so lucky. Together they stood frozen with fear before the biggest, scariest-looking man that Dominic had ever seen. Tibero Randizzi was a mountainous creature with a broad, hairy chest that burst the seams of his black leather vest. His long, tree-trunk-like legs carried his torso high into the air. His voice was a thunderous roar. In his powerful fist, Randizzi gripped the polished wooden handle of a homemade whip. Its long, thin branches had been sharpened into razor-like points and dusted with lye. Suddenly, with his free hand, Randizzi grabbed Antonio by the scruff of his neck. "'Now I have you,' he growled, his thick lips curling into a snarl. "'And I'll whip you for all the fruit you've stolen today, yesterday, and the day before that.' Antonio's face had gone white, and his, ice were glass, his eyes were glassy with fear. "'Let him go!' Dominic shouted, taking a step closer to them. His heart raced, and his breath quickened. Dominic had never been so frightened in his life, but he couldn't stop moving closer. "'Let him go!' he shouted again. "'I stole the cherries!' "'Oh, so you want to take his place?' Randizzi laughed as he let go of Antonio and grabbed hold of Dominic's neck. Sausage and the others cheered. "'You have a little more meat on your bones anyway!' hissed Randizzi as Dominic struggled to get his breath. Seconds later, the giant released his vice-like grip on Dominic's neck and was throwing him over his lap. "'More skin for my lashes to mark,' he growled. Dominic felt faint as he caught sight of the long whip being raised into the air. He closed his eyes tight on hearing the loud whoosh as it came down and ripped through his thin t-shirt, opening the skin on his back. A deadly silence followed as Sausage and the others were stilled by the frightening sight of Randizzi's handiwork. Then, with a satisfied grunt, the giant lifted his whip once more. Just at that moment, a flying clod of manure sailed through the air and struck him on the back of his bald head. Seething with anger, Tibero Randizzi stood up, letting Dominic fall to the ground. The giant took one step forward, but then tripped and let out a pained cry. Everyone looked on in astonishment as he lay slumped on the ground, moaning and clutching his chest. While Sausage and his group ran to Randizzi's side, Dominic grabbed, grabbed Antonio's hand and the two took off. Stop! Thieves! Stinking thieves! Sausage shouted hoarsely as he looked over his shoulder and watched them run away. This way! Francesco cried as he came up behind Dom beside Dominic and Antonio. Salvatore had run around an olive tree and met them on the other side. The loud insults of the boys echoed after them as they raced out of the orchard. They didn't stop running until they had gone through a field to the edge of the village. Once they had come to an old stone barn, the boys sank down in one of the stalls to rest. I wonder what happened to the giant, Antonio whispered. Did you see the way he fell to the ground? Did anyone see him stand up again? asked Salvatore. I didn't turn around to look, Francesco said. Do you think he was having a heart attack? asked Dominic. Did you see the way he was grabbing at his chest? No, Francesco assured him. I think he was just surprised by what hit him. Although turning the other cheek would have been the far better solution. He glared at Salvatore. Salvatore looked worried. I didn't mean to hurt him, he said. I only threw the manure so he would leave Dominic alone. Then Salvatore looked guiltily at Francesco. What's the matter with you? Francesco asked, giving Salvatore's arm a gentle shove. Salvatore studied the ground as he whispered. I dropped the net, and then I forgot to pick up the birds. What? Francesco began to shout. What are you saying? That was our dinner. When are you going to learn to keep your mouth shut? What do you mean? Salvatore asked. What did I say? Tu sei un fongo? Tu sei un fongo? Francesco reminded him, poking him each time he said it. Why did you have to tell him he was made like a mushroom? If you hadn't insulted the pig boy, he wouldn't have called out for the giant. The thought, made, the thought of sausage being made... Like a mushroom suddenly stuck Dominic as funny. 
he began to laugh uncontrollably and soon the others joined in but when the laughter died down antonio became serious i'm lucky dominic was there he said he rested his curly blond head against dominic's arm his head was warm and moist with the musty smell of little boy sweat the boys nodded their head as Antonio recounted, blow by blow, the entire episode of how Dominic heroically saved him from the whip. As Antonio spoke, Dominic remembered the words of the old man back at the museum. Open your heart, little one, and all that you need shall be yours. He wasn't sure just what those words meant, but he was sure of one thing. Somehow these boys had opened his heart, had made him care. But to care about someone else, someone he could lose, was as terrifying to Dominic as it was exciting. As he sat thinking all of this, Francesco grabbed Dominic by the shoulders and pulled him close. You took the lash today from my brother, Francesco said. From this day forward, you are family. We shall treat you as one of us. Dominic felt a lump in his throat. He tried to talk, but the words wouldn't come. No one in his entire life had ever called him family. But these boys were different. They genuinely liked him, and Francesco, his favorite, said the words Dominic had waited his whole life to hear. You are family. Dominic let the words play over and over in his mind. <laughs>